GNS University is one of India's leading private universities, which has been setting up, which was set up with the vision to benchmark global standards of education and create path-breaking educational programs in areas of national and global strategic importance. With a rich legacy of nine decades, GLS University is committed to making education accessible to all. Faculty of Business Administration was one of the first BBA colleges affiliated to Gujarat University when we were established in 1997 as GLS Institute of Business Administration. Later on, in 2000, we were renamed as NR Institute of Business Administration. In our 23 years of existence, NRBBA has always led the discussion and implementation of educational strategies, which are futuristic. Continuing with this legacy, we have planned this one week long faculty development program on the theme of hybrid teaching modalities, educational strategies for COVID and beyond. The purpose is to deliberate on what hybrid modalities are, how they can be employed in teaching, what strategies need to be developed, and how they can be implemented for academic success. To help us navigate this as yet uncharted future, we have with us Ms. Koral Das. Ms. Koral Dasgupta is a compulsive storyteller. She writes academic, non-fiction, and relationship dramas, exploring the inherent nature of complex minds that lead to a relatable conflict and unpredictable climax. As on October 2020, Ms. Dasgupta has published five books with Westland, Niyogi, Rupa, and Pan Macmillan publishers. She has been recently signed by Macmillan, Pan Macmillan for a five book series on mythological fiction. Ms. Das Gupta is known for a great sense of humor, but when she, she, and she herself declares this, that when she's tired or sad or angry, she fails. Ma'am has been recognized in the list of Innovator 25 Asia Pacific 2019 prepared by the Holmes Report, which is a New York based PR agency. She's the founder director of Tell Me Your Story, OPC Limited, which is a network of stories and storytellers, an online publication forum co-founded by Aditya Kazreka. They provide services to individuals, groups, and corporates on manuscripts, books, speeches, audiovisual, and other content related activities. They offer online storytelling courses in areas of fiction, nonfiction, articles, blogs. They also work on CSR and employee client engagement projects. Their stories play an integral role in communicating dreams, values, and culture. They are also involved with uh, learning and development teams in various co uh, comp corporates where they help them incorporate storytelling in their communication. We welcome Ms. Das Gupta and request her to carry the proceedings forward. Uh, thank you so much, Dipali, for the lovely introduction. Uh, in fact, <laughs> tell me your story. Biz has uh, moved steps into a few other things, which, uh, in the course of this particular conversation, I will tell you because. It will have a lot to do with uh, things that we will be discussing. Uh, and I'm audible, right? No issue with that? Yes, it's exactly is. audible. Yeah. So, uh, so first of all, thank you so much, uh, everybody who is listening. I had requested Dipali to uh, come up with a few uh, concern areas which uh, the audience would like to hear a little about. And Dipali has very beautifully prepared a list and sent it across. And I thank uh, everybody who has participated in it, and especially Dipali and Avni for uh, putting that together. Uh, when something like uh, that comes up, it becomes easy for us to you know, address a particular topic from that aspect, because that is when I know uh, what our audience is looking at. And that is exactly wh where the conversation begins from. 
which I wanted to very specifically put before you, that you should know your audience and what they are looking for, which is the very uh, initial step towards beginning any kind of uh, online relationship. Uh, now, uh, let me take it in a structured manner the way I uh, have uh, thought about it. And uh, if is there, uh, okay, there is not any uh, message option that I can see, but if there is any reaction, then please feel free to pass it on. And Dipali, if you could send me a WhatsApp, my uh, mobile is right here. All right, ma'am. Uh, we'll be taking questions uh, after okay. you deliver your okay. deliver your session. Uh, so that is how we are going to instruct the candidate. They can yeah. put it in the uh, chat box, but I'll come to that later. Certainly, but at times what happens is in between some context that I am talking about because it's not a structured and scripted okay. uh, conversation, yeah. you know. I'll at times, someone might might just say that I want a re-explanation of this particular thing. Certainly. I'll I'll pass it. Pass it on. On. I'll pass it. On. Yeah, so, you know, uh, to begin with, uh, what I felt that I must point it out is uh, to begin with this kind of a conversation where uh, we must develop an online or a digital relationship with our audience. It is extremely important for us to first accept that we are in that digital era where physical proximity will probably not uh, be possible. And so uh, a lot of it will have to be generated. Uh, a lot of it will have to be taken forward digitally. I have often seen, and that is uh, not a crime, that is something that uh, is my experience and uh, something that I have been very specifically uh, avoiding is that uh, the fact that we have suddenly been put to a situation where we are supposed to behave in a particular way and that is quite a you know a, a attitudinal shock or a cultural shock because uh, we always believed and we always uh, as we grew up we have seen relationships developing when people meet when people are face to face when people are uh, sharing a cup of coffee, when people can slap each other and, uh, you know, uh, have that personal connection. And now suddenly we are put into a space where we are expected to repeat that entire uh, relationship, repeat that entire camaraderie online. So what happened, uh, let me tell you a little about uh, uh, my uh, shift. So uh, since a long time, I had been on my own running Tell Me Your Story dot biz, and uh, we had taken uh, ourselves. I had taken a sabbatical from a corporate job that I was doing, and so I was working from home uh, when I didn't have a meeting. And uh, so when I didn't have a meeting, I would often because uh, at times working from home can be very claustrophobic. So I would go to a Starbucks and work from there. And finally, what happened was there were a lot many people who were working from Starbucks. So uh, every day we would see each other. And at the, initially, we would, when we saw each other for the fourth or fifth time, we would smile at them for the uh, little uh, uh, acquaintance that we had developed just by seeing each other. And then there would be a there would be a time, probably a week or so later, when we would say hi to each other. And then we would get into when if we, between work, when we needed to take a break, we would just take a walk and ask each other, how was work doing? And then there would be a time when one of them would be absent. And we would ask them the next day that we see them, that uh, I didn't see you for a while, where were you? So even in a, when in a setup, where that typical office format was not there, we found our colleagues. We found people who we could work together. That was still a physical proximity. People we saw, people we found smiling, their smiles were warm enough for us to, you know, get in touch and get talking. But now we are forced into a situation where 
that physical proximity will be completely absent. It's not just an office situation, but it's you are thrown in a corner and expected to develop that relationship, to have that camaraderie, to have that conversation, but digitally. The first challenge, the first challenge is to convince ourselves into this system. And I say that again and again and again, because uh, I keep speaking to a lot of people because of my work or because of my uh, exposure being an author. Uh, whenever we talk to each other and whenever we discuss that this uh, digital uh, you know uh, this transformation the digital transformation that we have been forced to embrace we all most of us talk about it with some bit of disappointment with some bit of disgust that this is just taking a toll on our health. This is just taking a toll on our relationships. This is just not happening. Now the point is, till the time we allow ourselves to be in that space where we, we tell ourselves that this is just not happening. Trust me, it will not happen. It will not happen. Because as much as you try to, uh, you know, uh, be nice, express your best, show your best self unless and until you are yourself motivated and convinced that the digital world is there to stay and it has to be embraced with the right attitude the pretense will show and it shows and it shows so the first step towards online relationship development is to be very well convinced that this is something that you want not something that has been forced upon you. The very simple, I mean, if I can put it very hard hittingly, then it is something like nobody has forced us to keep working. If this is not working, we can just quit. We can just put, get ourselves into our own little uh, chambers and not get, to get into this technology tournament. But that is not an option. Because we want our talent to come forward. We want our talent to be recognized. We want our talent to be taken by the rightful takers. And that at this situation cannot happen unless we have embraced technology or given technology its rightful place its right, and treated it with respect. So it is extremely important for all of us. This is something that is about us. And trust me, as I go ahead, you will find that this entire conversation is very less on technology and largely on ourselves. It's not about technology. When it's about developing online or digital relationships, it's about ourselves. It's not about technology. Technology is just a tool that probably gives you the path, the path that you walked while going to your office or rode while going to your office. That particular path had a lot of traffic. We every day traveled those, wrote on Twitter that too much traffic on Worldly Today. I am stuck, I am disturbed, I am disgusted. But what to do about this? We can't help. We have abused Delhi, Mumbai, Calcutta, Bangalore equally. So those traffic issues have been there. And in spite of that, we have gone to our office. Why? Because that was the place which allowed us bring our talent in front of our right customers, our consumers. It allowed us to make friends with a few people who in our worst days, worst days I mean, because there are certain things that happen every day, not every day, I mean to everyone, from the situations from which we want to run away from. And that situation is something that our office colleagues, the other people that we meet constantly give us. The idea is not just to embrace technology. The idea is to adapt ourselves in that technological environment where we can get the same kind of results by doing, the, uh, by doing things differently, but involving the same kind of things. So a few things that we are talking about is getting the same results, which is cue number one for us. Second is, having the same kind of warmth in our conversation, in our exchange. 
third is uh, not feel uh, not feel uh, stuck or not feel stopped by things that stop us just like the traffic stopped us on the road for half an hour we complained but we moved on that didn't become a life altering thing today by talking about technology as a uh, as a delightful massacre we are actually allowing that traffic to take more precedence on our lives compared to the work that we are capable of doing this is a very introductory word that i wanted to put in so that we work towards our self motivation and as i say that as i move forward you will understand that this this particular session is not about technology it's about ourselves uh so the idea is to motivate self and that motivate self doesn't mean that i don't i'm not trying to mean that we find ways to you know exercise energize yes those are important but what is more important is to fall in love with technology we can fall in love with technology when we are we open ourselves to understand and explore and research what are the different 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 aspects that this particular uh, these particular tools can bring to us and so when you try to understand that what is in it for me which is the biggest motivation for everybody what is in it for me so when you actually look at technology from that angle you will actually understand or you will actually prioritize in your own brain things that are there for you and these are the things that are not there for you so uh, from all the uh, topics that i had received i will come to them one by one or together uh, in the in between the conversation but what i realize is very strongly that our biggest boon is technology and our biggest problem is technology so the idea is to strike that balance where the boon part is uh, elevated and the disaster part is downgraded or demoted if we may say so so in order to do that in order to elevate the boon part and i i mean this is something i'm sure every management uh, professor has spoken to their uh, students about i mean we see those in various motivational lectures in various um, uh, organizational behavior related lectures we all constantly discuss how to bring up your strengths and take eyeballs away from your weaknesses and it is the same thing we have come back to so as you see that technology is not something that is a, a new thing that has been crowned i mean we it's not a heavy crown that has been put on our head and now we can move our head right, right, uh, left and right it is actually something that has always been there in different formats only the format has changed and now we don't know where to go and how to do it the entire block is here the biggest challenge is to remove the mental block first thing uh coming to my uh, my example if i may uh, quote that when we uh, i mean tell me your story dot base is a four year uh, old uh, thing that we had started and when the lockdown started uh, we felt that uh, the way we had been functioning is definitely not something that we will be able to take it forward so i we had two options one is we shut shop and say that okay boss we had to uh, uh, succumb to the pressures of uh, lockdown and uh, this coronavirus pandemic and the second option was uh, let's try so uh, i just thought that okay i had prepared my mind that i will try for one year if i feel that it is taking too much of a toll on my health on my uh, mind on my relationships in family and on my uh, relationship that i have built for example a four year old uh, organization has built some relationships very strongly and if i can't do justice to them then i have no right to exist i have put my shutter down and apologize and tell them that it's not happening 
So I thought that, okay, I'll try for uh, say six to eight months. I'll see how it goes. If it doesn't go anywhere, I am ready to make that social media post. And uh, you know what? I had actually written an apology note. Uh, it's still there in my uh, Gmail. And whenever I feel very, very demotivated, I feel very, very tired, very, very upset about things not happening the way I want, I look at that again and again. Because that is something which is the biggest negative reinforcement that I can have in my life. I am scared of the day when I have to actually post that on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and on Instagram. I'm very scared about it. So every time I watch it, I know that I try to figure out a way where I don't have to post it. And so in that, in that fear, in that fear that I have to do it, and tell me your story was something uh, which was a completely uh, personal dream, which has been taken ahead by a lot many other people in different uh, capacities, some big, some, some small. But it was uh, wonderful, some wonderful relationships I have made, some wonderful people have come together. And going ahead and telling them that it's not working was something, not something I was uh, okay to embrace. So, you know, the first shock that I, uh, I faced in this particular situation was not for myself. And that is the beauty about relationships, that if you are really invested in your relationships, you don't put yourself in a higher pedestal. You put your relationships in a, in a higher pedestal. And that's, that same happened with me. It felt that me writing that particular message, which has already been well documented, because I'm an author, I can write well. So it is that well documented message was it would take three seconds for me to put up on Facebook. But what about those who had trusted, who had looked forward to this particular uh, 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 system or this institution? and believe that it will do, do well, and believe that it has a great future. That was not something that I was convinced with. I was convinced with telling myself that it is not happening, because I don't see failure as a failure. But telling people are that uh, all kinds of trust and all kinds of love that they have shown towards the platform in four years has not reached anywhere and is at a stage of closure was not something that I was open to uh, embrace so early. And as, as I say again and again, it was not my personal failure. It was, I just felt that I cannot be doing this to my audience. So trust me, this is the first time I'm talking to you about that particular note that I had written in my Gmail which is still waiting to see uh, Facebook sometime. And probably uh, sometime soon I will delete that message because I don't need that message. Uh, in this particular phase, what came to my mind very strongly is that I have to rebuild the entire value system. From day one, there was a particular uh, platter of values that we had approached uh, this particular design with. And we had approached it from that angle. We, have worked, we had worked towards that. And that was the time when I accepted that technology is here to stay and physical proximity won't happen very soon. So now what do I do? Do I say that the four years of uh, hard work is, uh, has gone waste? Or do I just uh, close shop? Or let me just try once for six, eight months and uh, closure is always there for me to do. So we did that. And we first, the first very, very significant and conscious step that we had taken, and now I can tell it to you with a fair bit of confidence, is that that time I didn't know this was what I was doing. But that time what I knew was, I had to find an alternative because I cannot meet people, but I have to find an alternative. The first thing that came to mind was that I will have to still continue building the network. 
because it is a network that I will be identified with in a digital space or any other space, anywhere you go. Second thing is, I will have to pull up the content. There will be times when I cannot stand and speak or the team or the internal, uh, uh, the internal audience cannot shout from rooftops because they will be facing their own issues. They will be uh, having their own uh, weaknesses. There could be mental blocks. There could be uh, certain periods of uh, complete self-questioning. And all those phases would come. But now when I look back, I see that I have gone through all those phases where I kept on crossing the stage one after the other. First was to explain to myself that, okay, this is what you have. So there are two options that I have to look at what I have and try to, uh, you know, push the button and kind of make way through that in a busy traffic. When the car has stopped, do I just come out of the car and start walking or I sit in the car and lament? So I had these two options, but do I, do I try to find a way out with what I have or do I lament with what I don't have? I did both. First, I lamented with what I don't have. Days of tears, uh, sitting alone and, uh, and questioning and blaming two, two particular entities. One is God, second is Kismet. These are the two available who doesn't, you know, never, they don't ever, uh, they don't ever counter question. They don't ever tell you that, ever tell you that you are the loser. We are not. So since they don't answer back, it is the best to blame them and it's easy to blame them. So I did do it. After that, since they were not answering and I couldn't have a good fight, which I am usually otherwise, uh, since I couldn't find these two, neither God nor Kismet, I had to look at those things which uh, were available. And what was available was a huge uh, technological uh, environment largely made available for free. So the first thing that caught my eye was, and I have this, uh, you know, roving eyes, if I may say that, I have this roving eyes towards whoever is doing whatever, because being an author, I have to constantly uh, collect information and, you know, process it. That, okay, this is the thing that is happening right now. This is the way people are. And even Tell Me Your Story is a collection of stories from the present generation. So our work is to curate stories curate stories under various um, themes. The reason why do we started this is something that is very beautiful and let me just uh, take the opportunity to tell you. The reason we started this is we felt that right now, the stories that are happening right now is actually the communication of this era. It's history. Today, I feel, I felt bad about someone having said something to me. And I make it into a story. My feelings get trapped there into that story. It is history. Tomorrow, circumstances will change. People will change. Environment will change. This will become past. But it will remain a very co significant contributor in a particular era. So every small story has its participation in history. Tomorrow, when someone writes about this particular phase of existence, when a historian does it, it's very normal for that historian to have a bias of his own, human beings, right? So they will have political bias, they will have gender bias, they will have social bias, so many different kinds of biases. It makes for a different lecture altogether. But the stories of this era, which are being told by the participants of this era, that cannot give a biased picture. Even if, that, even if there is a bias towards the present government or the opposition, that is the truth of this era. This is what people are feeling. So we allowed it to flow like a stream under different themes, different formats. Now, as you can understand that my work is largely academic, uh, along with uh, it's uh, one step in the entertainment, the other step in academic. And I enjoy doing that. I love it. So, this is what I had, and this is what I'll always have, because I don't know how to do things differently. Other than being a writer, I don't know if there is another existence. 
right from the day when I finished my MBA and uh, started my uh, work uh, journey. I have changed my profile many times and I settled to being what I am today because uh, I didn't know where to go from there. I get bored very early, but from here, I have all the manipulation, uh, all the permutation combination that I have done has been within this zoom. I never felt like stepping out. So when we started doing that, when I started looking at what I have, the first thing that, and let me tell you that I'm a complete tech, uh, having worked in a, a company that was doing technology, technical printers, inkjet printers, and I still don't know what is an inkjet printer. So uh, I'm a complete challenge. But having said that, you know, when you are facing that fear of death, you know how to live, right? So I had given myself six months to survive. And I thought, chalo, in these six months, I'll leave. In these six months, I'll have as much fun. I don't care who says what. I don't care who is judging. I don't care if people are saying that I'm not doing it well. In six months, the entire scene changed. And it changed because uh, I prioritized on having fun with Tell Me Your Story. So the first thing that came to my mind was that there's something called Zoom. And uh, in Zoom, you can converse, you can record. So initially, when we started, the first thing that Zoom told us was that if you have to record and if you don't want Zoom logo, you will have to pay. And uh, anytime my business was, I didn't know whether it will exist. So why will I pay? I didn't pay. After a few times of using Zoom, I realized that boss, you can use Zoom in far more different ways. And what you pay will be far lesser than what you gain. So, you know, I grew with that. You, I grew with that. The moment the mind block shifts, what the point that I'm trying to say is the moment that mind block shifts, you actually take a very fearless step ahead. And that fearlessness really helps. So uh, right now, I can tell you that we, in, the, in the last six months, I mean, starting from March, I don't know how many months, I didn't, I have stopped counting. But in the <laughs> last few months, uh, our website, from scratch again, had registered 14 times visibility and uh, six times more uh, user base. And that is something that I was not expecting, but it happened. Now, what did I do to build that relationship? I, find, I found myself, I, I tried to ask, who am I? And what does Tell Me Your Story ideally stand for? Or what is the dream? End of the day, the idea why I was doing it or the reason why I was doing it because I felt that uh, stories define an era number one number two these make for historical narratives number three it would have very heavy academic relevance so I had only these three in mind history academia and storytelling so I we completely concentrate on the concentrated on these three trying to bring the three together and forget everything else. So what happened was we actually, before lockdown, we didn't know how to take that ahead. I mean, what I'm saying, telling you is the merger of academic and entertainment. We didn't know how to do that because when we actually spoke about our ideas to other uh, other uh, partners or collaborators whom we could find out or felt that, that they could make sense. They had a lot of doubts. People had a lot of doubts in the very model or in which I was planning Tell Me Your Story. A lot of people said that, why would someone do something like this? I mean, you have heard things like Bangali ho, acha, shock hai, lurki ho, acha, ha, ladies should get into doing all these things only. So I have heard all these things. And um, I usually don't uh, have a problem with these. Uh, haan, ladies, yehi karti. But then what happens is, what remains in my brain is, at some point of time, that person comes back. Aray, tumne kya kar 
<laughs> so that is my that is my go to place you know that is my goal that this person will come back to me and share it in the gallery and it works on different levels it's it is self motivational and it is jo thappad aapko lagana hota hai na us side pe wo apne aap lag jati hai aapko kuch karne ki zarurat nahi padti hai kismat kuch nahi karti hai bhagwan kuch nahi karta hai so uh, while doing this of course i have a child 8 year old i uh, have my own family i had a house uh, all my maids were working from their home so i had to work from my home and you know what work i am talking about right now so uh, time had actually come down and i didn't know how to balance time so i kept writing i had this habit of uh, bulleting out points on a piece of paper because when you actually uh, think by yourself it's too much of a clutter constantly something or the other is coming and being a woman i have too many things calling constantly so i have this habit of noting down in points and putting a cross or putting a tick behind beside the points that make sense and those that don't so the first thing that i understood one of the first few things that i understood that i will have to work out on is one how to strategize my time because it may hai and in those in that limited time i had a lot more things to accommodate usually things that i didn't do earlier uh, cooking and cleaning were not things that i had to do ever so now we were doing of course uh, me and my husband we had uh, uh, distributed the chores between ourselves but having said that you know when you have a child and this is something that i always bring in every conversation that when you have a child and the responsibility of the child on you mothers take an extra uh, responsibility because a small child needs the tenderness of a mother more than the roughness of a father it's not that the father will actually always be rough because uh, that is something that he enjoys doing no it is a physical communication it is a physical proximity it is the anatomy that a female female body is far more tender and a man, man's body is far more rough so for a small child for that little mind the tenderness of a female body must communicate because that will help him grow up with that compassion this is something that i always tell in all of my lectures because i have often seen ladies women being very apologetic about these particular roles we are we often talk about mother's role father's role please do understand economy and in life is not just our present we have a role in building our future and your ch- the child is future so the first thing that must go up that is the biggest management uh challenge our biggest management uh learning that we can have for ourselves that don't neglect your child make sure that he or she is your first priority despite wherever you work or whatever you work because that is the future your organization is also working towards the future it is not working towards your present you are working towards your future you are not working towards your present the life that you are leading right now has been planned and processed a few years behind and that is the reason you are enjoying the kind of comfort that you can right now so don't neglect the future so having said that now coming back to the topic it was important for me to understand what works for me you know create my system it could be very different from other systems i could either stay up all night or i find myself time what made sense was of course staying up all night didn't make sense what made sense was to allocate very very uh, strictly allocate time that from this time to that time is what works and whatever i have to do will have to be done within this only so a lot of extra things that you do 
to either entertain yourself or to uh, for your progress personally or uh, professionally will have to be prioritized and prioritized doesn't mean that we give up on things that uh, we enjoy doing or what is important for us to do at least what i did i'll tell you i had uh, only 24 days in the uh, in the day or 24 hours in the day but i had 7 days so things that i felt was a very important part of my chore and for which i couldn't make time was distributed in days so monday tuesday wednesday i keep one hour for things that are not immediately necessary and will not cause life and death uh, you know uh, disturbance and uh, the other days i i mean so i sorted out all those things which are necessary but not uh, threatening so all those things that were necessary and not threatening i distributed from your space what i understand is that if you are teaching your students and if you are finding that i mean if you have to uh, make sure that you are using technology to reach out to your students the same has to apply the first thing is to thing to understand and prioritize or put a system is about what works for you and what doesn't certain things will work for you certain things will work for others when someone gives you like just like i am giving telling you a lot of things about what i did or what i do not everything will be applicable to you so you have to be very clear that not everything just if you have to note anything if you have to uh, copy any kind of success formula only copy the attitude don't copy the system because everybody's system will be different and it has to be different and only when the systems differ and we share that learning we become become innovators all of us and we have something to learn from each other uh, otherwise one person system is may not or will not actually uh, work for others so when i say that uh, you create your system which means that before you probably had some time to think you probably had some time time to plan your uh, lectures or plan your conversation or uh, you knew which student to pull out and which student will be very very attentive these things will be there i'll tell you what i did i didn't have time to think because as you understand that if we are uh, into a business uh, space and anytime i'm a bengali i'm a terrible business person so uh, but then any kind of business needs time to think and i didn't have time to think everything was mechanical i just felt that i can't think beyond i can't think if i have put a particular thing in place i have to think that okay this has been set rolling this is rolling now what is the next jump that i'll take how do i move it I didn't have time to think because constantly the, either something will come on phone or we have some conversations on uh, Zoom uh, or I am uh, bound into the nitty gritties because manpower was a problem. Not everything can be handled remotely. I didn't have time to think. But I found a solution. And uh, please don't judge me when i tell you what solution i found for myself because it worked for me and it still works for me i think what i did every day <laughs> because that is the only time i have 15 20 minutes when i'm not disturbed and actually when i am bathing i think think thoroughly think as deep as i can and what i actually do is it's not just that i am thinking when i'm bathing but uh, i note down some of the uh, concern points i believe in these in operating through cons concern points because that is the only way i can survive so i note down my concern points that this is not happening that is waiting that is not i don't have a solution for this so i keep them waiting i think about them when i am going to sleep or even when my when i i actually write as an author i write early in the morning so 
I get up at four four thirty. That is the time I write because that is the time that nobody needs me. There is no disturbance. I prepare for that. I have no time to think, as I said. So when I go to sleep, I think about what I am writing next till I sleep. So what actually happens when you do that is you arouse your subconscious. Again, one point that I tell everybody. But be be very very in touch with your subconscious. Your subconscious has also all the solutions, but our conscious has so much of nuisance planned in our lives that uh, we can't actually cross those uh, levels of conscious to reach our subconscious and pull the problem out of there and pull the solution out of there. Our conscious is posing problems, and we are getting drowned in that zone of problems. we have to reach our subconscious to pull out the solution so you know uh, what i did was when i when i am cooking or when i am uh, cleaning the house that was the time i kept on thinking that what is it that i have to solve what is it that i don't have a solution as of now and in between so of course i am looking at those unclean places and i am having to make sure that Uh, those things are taken care of right because this entire coronavirus is spending is about cleanliness so and with a small child at home i had to be even more cautious so while doing that i kept on telling myself that boss this is the problem you cannot run from the problem i while <laughs> with the jharu in one hand and the pen in another i kept writing down that okay this is something that i have to find a solution for and when i went for my bathing i would if i wrote down seven problems out of that at least one i would have some kind of clarity with even if not a solution and when you have a clarity that this is the problem these are the strength areas this is what i can work on and this is something that i would rather not touch because it will not help and it is not my strength area at all i need help when you have that clarity you also have the clarity of how to approach it and so you are path onward and more importantly what happens is throughout the day you are talking to 10 different people right so when you have that thing very well charted clarified in your brain when you talk to a person suddenly it comes to my mind that are this person can actually help me there so you know you have aroused your subconscious to that extent that you make use of your opportunities far better than otherwise so trust me if you want if you want you can become a far more efficient person during these months compared to what you were before this or otherwise so coming back it is important for us to put our systems in place and know what works and what doesn't some people are extremely soft spoken people and uh, the the teachers in my kids school actually had a word with me some time back and um, one of the teachers put it just that out that i am an extremely soft spoken person i cannot shout i cannot scream i cannot uh, you know uh, make that voice impact or by a technology so what do i do and uh, given that i have some kind of uh, exposure to podcasts i had uh, uh, hosted podcasts and spoken for it myself as well i know that what is available to you is something called a mic so uh, you can have your headphones with this kind of a structure this kind of a structure with amplified voice amplifiers which can work for you or you can have a separate mic connected to your system which will amplify your voice for your audience these are different things now uh, when i look at the problems uh, i see things like distractions and uh, the non verbal verbal communications all of which i am coming to uh, in the time that is left but what i want to very strongly point out is that in any business or in any work that we all are doing it is very important for us to put forward our content appropriately this is something that i have uh, spoken again and again at various form, uh, forums and i am very specific about this particular aspect 
that if you are trying to ensure that your audience is hooked on to you, the only thing that can make that happen is your content. Because the audience must find interest in your content. So while it was customer is king, today we have moved on to content is king because content can track the right customers. Now, when it comes to content, how much liberty does a professor of management have in experimenting or in giving their people uh, the kind of content that holds their attention. Here, let me tell you something which is, which is the biggest truth and at the same time, the, uh, the biggest, uh, what do I say, uh, the biggest folly. What sells end of the day is not your product or your service. What sells is your personality. We all know that, right? So if your audience is hooked on to you as a person, things that you are trying to sell will go off the shelf. And this works. So does that mean that I appear, I appear on my Zoom talks with an extra coat of lipstick? No. Basically, the idea is to tell people in as many words and in as many ways possible what is it that you have brought on the table. That is what we'll say. And one of my very old professors, I had uh, first um, trained under him and then I had worked with him as a colleague. Uh, he had told, told me that, you know, professors are the biggest entertainers. Why so? Because professors are dealing with uh, janta that is between 18 to 25 years of age. The age group that is most prone to distraction. The age group which is slowly taking its own adult decisions. And the time when it takes, when a person takes their own adult decisions, a natural rebellion comes. A natural, uh, there is a natural need in that age group or in that phase of uh, human life where people want to make experiments, people want to disobey, people want to find out their own rights and learn from their own wrongs. Nothing wrong with that. So, the, so now we are some professors who are supposed to give gyan to these people and they are supposed to sit and listen. At whatever age we are in, we would probably agree that it doesn't happen. It didn't happen with us. We also bumped classes and went to a film. I went for shadow films. But try to think which were the classes that we chose to bump. Did we bump the, our favorite professor's classes? Probably not. Why? Because did, did that professor ever tell us that if you don't come to my class, I'll deduct marks? Or was that professor very strict that if we didn't go, uh, they will have a negative, uh, they will take a negative impression of ourselves? So it didn't happen. At least I remember that in our time, there were all kinds of professors, but we loved our professors, which was most important. But we loved our professors. Till date, when we think of our professors, we think of them with a lot of fondness, with a lot of kindness. What actually worked was our professors very successfully made us fall in love with them. And that is something that is missing from our generation, if at all. We have to find ways in which our students can love us. It could be about being at par with them and not let your age come in between the conversation. 
you have to accept that this generation is different from the earlier generation and so if you come up with things like hamare time pe hum log ye karte the that won't work with the next generation it won't didn't work with us either so we have to be at par with our next generation if we want them to love us to listen to us because times have changed during our generation we were uh we were respectful towards those who were elder to us in age just because that was something that had been culturally embedded in us this is a time when people are constantly looking for value right so unless and until you bring that value it doesn't matter your age doesn't matter it doesn't matter that you are elder but being an elder if you are trying to be bossy or if you are trying to be dominant dominance is a value that this generation just wants to kick out of the door it does want to as much as you accept it uh, believe it don't not believe it they can't accept dominance and you see that on social media anyway we we are a generation that doesn't accept dominance and if we are not accepting dominance then how are these people who are half a generation down us how will they accept they will rebel so it brings us back to point 1 it it brings us back to the point that we have to make sure that our audience is in love with us and how do we make them fall in love with us and in this question lies the answer to a few questions like how to battle distractions how to minimize boredom of the participants uh absence of non verbal feed the feedback right if a person finds value in uh, whatever you are bringing to the table that person trust me will take extra load to make sure that you are available wo aage badhne nahi dega jab tak wo khud aapke duniya mein shamil nahi hoga i can tell you tell this to you with a lot of confidence because i have faced it now how do you make people love you given that they can't see you properly right ek cheez hota hai na matlab i remember that when we had uh, our uh, physical proximity was not an issue and i went to teach in a college the kids came to me to show their stuff something that they had written and they would not mail it to me they would send it to me there and they would want me to check it right there or read it right there and they would sit in front and look at me like this because they wanted to see the reaction on my face because what i said they felt that ye thoda sa samjha matlab samjha ke bolegi directly face pe nahi bolegi ki bakwas dikh raha so she would try to uh, they would try to you know uh, check the reactions on my face and i found that very very innovative that they are trying to you know uh, get into your mind they are trying to get into the mind and that is something so interesting now uh, coming back to the content area that how do you make people fall in love with you how do you make people so when we were in that in that classroom someone said something or someone wrote something and showed kya hota hai ki suddenly you would feel like touching a person on the head and you put your hand and that communicates a hell of a lot of things someone didn't do well in uh, the papers you just put a hand on the head and say that everything will be get sorted there is a natural love that person will probably tear up right now here you cannot do that that the physical proximity is completely cut and you cannot convey to that person through your physical touch or intimacy that you care so what are we left with we are left with one empathy and two content empathy because the kind of problems we are facing they are facing even more because you know right now for example i am speaking and uh, mai keh sakti ki mera gala dukh raha hai but the person who is hearing a monologue right right now i am in between a monologue and the person who is hearing the monologue if that person is not enjoying the monologue he or she is having a bigger torture so and then they cannot always cut out of it because they know that it is required as well so empathy is something 
that can actually help you build a content which everybody will enjoy. And the second part, everybody when I say, I mean both the trainer and the trainee. Empathy should be applicable to both. Unidirectional, it doesn't uh, go through. And second is comp content, content that will be palatable for everybody. It will be something that I would love to say. And it will be something that people who are listening are open to grasp. Uh, I will get into the content area now, which is something which is something very, very close to my heart, as you can understand that Miripur is in the content. So, uh, and I came to this particular space from a time when I was teaching management. I used to teach consumer behavior. And, uh, you know, I was a relatively young professor in uh, my college. And uh, others were far more uh, uh, senior. So there, is a there was a natural tendency among students to treat me with less importance. It happens because I was not too older than them. Right, and some of them had even come from, uh, they were doing uh, uh, executive courses, right? So uh, these executive courses, there was one guy who was even elder than me. And uh, he had come after a few years uh, in the job. So there were these guys who would talk among themselves and talk among themselves in a particular frivolous way, right? And I was, uh, uh, I mean, I, right now, whatever I'm saying, please try to understand that I'm trying to establish a problem and then get into the solution. So please listen to me from that perspective. So I was a comparatively young professor and a com comparatively good looking professor. So their response towards me was not very academic. And that was the first problem that I had faced. I had to make sure that the importance that I get from them is not anything other than academic. And uh, none of my indulgence, as much as I am uh, in love with my students, none of my indulgence should be communicated in a way that they feel that I am enjoying uh, their appreciation, which is not academic. So there were two things that I had to do. I started discussing some of the papers that I had written for the IIMs. It was not that I wanted to promote myself, but it was important for me to let them know that I have come with credentials, if not age. It was very much important for me to uh, get the audience, get my audience within my group by showing them the right things, giving them the right clues. So, and I started also giving them the right dreams because uh, those days I remember a lot of uh, colleges, I think even today, or probably it has always been like that, that many of the premier colleges come out with their own uh, journals, which have ISBN or ISSN, uh, ISSN. And it is extremely prestigious to get published by them and it is extremely prestigious to go to those forums and present a paper. I sh started showing them those dreams that you can also do it. So initially they didn't have the uh, confidence. They tried to tell me that, uh, ma'am, why don't we assist you and become the co-writer? So uh, I said, you have to uh, fight it out. So you will be judged at your level, I will be judged at my level. So I will not share credit. The work that I do, but uh, what happens is that uh, if a few of you can make it there, then what happens is the institute gives us the entire grant for going there and presenting the paper uh, at indoor or at cozy code. So we go to them. And train me must be the the technical building. That was something that caught a fire, you know? <laughs> and basically the motivation was not that they had to submit a paper successfully, 
देयर मोटिवेशन वॉज पिकनिक करते करते ट्रेन में जाएंगे और लौटेंगे so they actually started working and the good thing that happened was they reached out to the professors of various disciplines telling that we want to apply for this contest and we want to get our papers uh, submitted so aap log check karke feedback do this is not something that i had taught them but they went ahead and did it totally by their i mean they found out their own ways they did their own research at times they took my feedback or they to, they took my guidance but i didn't write it for them but it is important to show people the right kind of dreams when they started working their dream was train mein masti karte karte jayenge when the research work started and the hard work happened the dream changed the dream changed into mujhe jeet ke aana because they had worked so hard because they had believed that uh, it is something worth their time so uh, by the time that actually happened uh, this team was the second runner up it was not one of the winners of the contest but it was something that a memory that we still cherish till date i am in touch with all my uh, students i think that is such is the relationship between a student and a professor that it never goes but uh, those are some right reinforcements to plant into their lives or some right dreams to put into their lives this was about the empathy part that i had discussed coming back to content you know uh, very soon after joining my uh, teaching profile i realized i was teaching consumer behavior in the second uh, year uh, which may, meant that they had already spent one full year doing kellogs and mcdonalds and you know uh, nirma and all such brands now 20 24 year old people they can do their reading they can read kotler by themselves they can read the consumer behavior books by themselves they didn't need me to read out the chapters and explain to them word by word and if i did that they felt that, that it was a waste of time so all the uh, presentations that i planned for them was very specifically aligned in a way that would not discuss something that is already there in the textbooks and that is something that i had made my uh, signature statement the textbooks nahi padhayenge that you will you guys will study you guys will answer the questions at the back you guys will do the case studies and you guys will judge that something is not up to your mark and you will have to come and tell me that this is not mazanya this is right but what i did was uh, in the classrooms i planted all kinds of alternate content for them to for people to impart learning and this particular uh, step that i had done uh, is actually still pulling me in my content area whatever work i am doing the books that i have written you know what i had done then was i brought what came to my mind was that you may be interested in different other things but films are something that everybody is interested films movies indian cinema it's uh, the world cinema so i actually brought bollywood to classroom the first case study i still remember that we discussed and cracked in class was uh, why was dawn remade why was uh, dawn remade as the amitabh bachchan cult movie and why not any other because amitabh bachchan had made many other very successful films why dawn and we actually cracked that entire uh, case study in class and i won't i can't explain to you how much the attendance as well as uh, attention had suddenly shot up suddenly every everybody had kept away their mobiles and they were trying to understand that what the hell is this lady doing why on earth is she discussing films and i am talking about 2012 uh, that was still the time when 
film was meant for entertainment and uh, it was meant to be frivolous nobody looked at film stars as a brand nobody looked at films as a brand the entire branding thing happened post that that was the time when uh, people thought that uh, films uh, discussing films is waste of time or just uh, time pass ke liye hota hai people didn't take films as an academic uh, content so i mean not that people didn't take uh, take well academic so that was the time when we were going on and on and i would come back and document out everything because a lot of the discussions were impromptu and i had to check out whether things that i discussed in class were uh, good enough or whether i needed a modification in the content that we had agreed as right so that became my first book actually i was documenting my class lectures so that i can repeat it in the next class and it is called power of a common man uh, written, uh, it's a consumer behavior uh, book with shalok as the story the point that i am trying to make is i am not again trying to sell uh, the things that i have done in the past the point that i am trying to make is your content has to be such that it draws attention of your audience and in this particular context there are a lot of things that go up first thing is know your audience who they are where they come from i know it is if you are dealing with 250 students it is difficult for you to go through each and every profile but when you actually have an idea of a common demographic or psychographic trait of the people that you are handling you will find out a common area of interest and that is very important another thing that i often did and that could be useful of use to you to everybody listening to this is i always at the very beginning of my classes told people to give me a list of their interests so some people wrote myriad things some people wrote uh, video games some people wrote uh, cricket some wrote uh, radio so you know uh, the interests were diverse as much as it is for you and me if we are to no- note down what are our interests probably 300 list a list of 300 would come but then you put your excel sheet in a way that it's easier for you to take out excuse me to take out the common ones and you know that you can base your lectures on those areas because those are the spaces that people are any time they already have a, you already have their ready made year for those topics second is that uh, it is important for us to know what our audience spends time on so one they will tell you very directly what are their interests what are their hobbies what are their interests from which you can pick up your topics but when you give your uh, when you have uh, your uh, audience charted out so for example 18 to 25 resident of uh, gujarat uh, born between so and so uh, date these things will actually tell you all those things that they have been exposed to and all those things that may have touched them in various degrees right you know i mean that journey that they have led and understand that these are far younger than us so their emotional attachment to things happening to the environment is far higher than ours we can neglect certain things say we are into that mature space where we neglect certain things saying that okay this doesn't need our immediate attention there are a list of priorities but that is the age group that jumps into opportunities because they are emotionally carried away very fast so having led the same uh, you know the same uh, phase of time with a little bit more maturity than them you should be able to understand what is it that they are attached with what is this, what is it that they are touched by third is third way of uh, 
finding out what content, how to plan their content is. This is something that I use often. Overwhelm them, shock them, surprise them. Always. Don't let them predict what you will do in class. Always make sure that if they have lost a particular class with you, then they feel that, you know, twang inside their heart that, oh shit, today what she'll do, I don't know. She always does something interesting or he always does something interesting. They have it in their heart to ask that, Aaj kya ki? you know, we constantly have to find ways to overwhelm them, shock them, surprise them. Uh, this can be done by putting up content that they are not expecting or by inviting response that they are not expecting. For my classes, something that has worked is I have always treated my audience as a star. So whenever uh, I have to deliver a lecture to a classroom or an academic, whenever I have to do an academic session on a particular subject, I always uh, try to make sure that I treat my uh, kids like stars because this is the age when they are attention hungry. They want to know or they want to be treated in a particular way and they love to be treated in that way. So if you give them importance, they give you importance back. If you give them, if you may, uh, kind of, you know, uh, show your appreciation towards what they have or towards their thought process, their thinking, whatever knowledge they have gained, whatever is their strength, if you show your love and appreciation for those, they will make an extra attempt to do the same back to you. They will try to find out more about you. They will try to find out more about what interests you. The basic idea or the basic need that we have here is that both the speaker and the audience are aligned and interested in the topic that is being spoken at and how it is being spoken, at, spoken about. So when you give them that importance, they will give you back the importance. When you show or when you think of, I mean, these are very important things to be, you know, uh, stitched into your lecture and these often happen impromptu. And that is the reason I say that it's very important that you know your audience personally. So when you know, for example, if you observe a person, one of your students who have done something right, for example, helped, I mean, this is an example, that someone has helped a, a visually impaired person to cross the road. And you saw that, that person doing that. In your lecture, at some point of time, stitch that inside. You might, your topic might be something different. Your topic is obviously management, something else. But in, you can always show that as a leadership skill, right? You can always show that as a motivational thing for everybody else. Stitch that particular good thing. It will do two things to you. One is it will positively reinforce your audience. Second is one person will know that you have noticed and appreciated. Third is your audience will look at you with a completely different level of respect. And that is something where I again and again say that we must bring up case studies from life. Academic books already have age old case studies that we have chewed and strained and done whatever we could with them. It is important now that we pick up case studies from life. Right now, something happened. Right now, something is happening in our personal lives, in the social life, in the life that everybody knows, in the life that is not known. Something or the other keeps happening and that has some level of learning. Try to put those, try to include those in your lectures. Uh, something that I have done and I have been so successful in doing is, I mean, I will end the discussion on content with this and move on to the next uh, topic. 
uh, something that I have been able to do is, uh, I being a management student, do have a neck towards um, coding, decoding, and re-establishing things from those perspectives. So just some time back, I had released uh, this book called uh, Ahalya. And Ahalya uh, is uh, the first of a five series book. Uh, it is the Panchakanya series. And so Ahalya is the first. After this, four more will come on four other uh, legendary women from Indian mythology. Now, this particular book was the idea of writing it came from women leadership perspective. That what does, and this was something that I always had asked myself, that women from Indian mythology, women from Indian epics have left a lot behind, but they have not been spoken enough. It is important for us to know what was the feminine leadership as explained in the Indian epics or Indian mythology. And hence, try to you know, uh, steer learning towards that because that is something which, is, which has remained largely ignored in our academic and entertainment environments. So uh, when I managed to do this, uh, the first book was Ahalya that was written. And I could see that, and I still see that there is a lot of interest in this book simply because of the novel uh, idea that has been brought forward. And this is exactly what I'm requesting everybody to do, that bring your case studies from places that are not expected. There are many. Bring your case studies from places which we never thought can be an area of uh, discussion. Right now, it is, as you understand, that it is not just a period when we tell you Maslow's hierarchy and finish it off, one lecture. The role of teachers hasn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't end just by imparting some management uh, theories to the class. That people will listen, but they won't get touched. If you want to touch your audience, bring them to face a lot of social learning, a lot of humanitarian learning. There are lots of examples that we have around that seeks our attention. I would love to do projects at my end, which I am doing already. I would love to do projects uh, in collaboration with uh, management institutes, which can bring up such case studies where students can uh, work towards those things. I request you to make those happen. And that cannot happen just by cracking an idea. That can happen only when you have to first develop the students to come at par with the idea. Students will come at par with the idea when the teacher is at par with the idea. So pick up learning from your home, from the world outside, from the less privileged places, from the more privileged places, and get students into that mode where whatever they see or whatever they go through, they have it in their brain to analyze it from that perspective. When they are able to do that, your job as a professor is done, right? That is not when we have to constantly talk to them about management jargons. What we have, our biggest challenge and our biggest uh, work is to make them think in a particular way. So right now, the possibilities are less. Get students to look at their homes and find out case studies from there. 
I can tell you one right now. In every home, there are homemakers. In every home, there are uh, men and women who are taking special steps to make sure that things run in a particular way. At every home, there is a system. If students study that system instead of, this is not the time when anybody can separate themselves away from things that are happening inside the family or outside. As a part of their management exercise, if students take interest in understanding how the home system is working and how the home system can be elevated from level zero to level one and then to level two, given that it is facing certain issues. I think you have given them a brilliant uh, work and the case studies that will come up is something that everybody would love to hear because that is something that matters to all. Why only students? Their parents will also sit and hear those case studies. That's just an idea. Next is what I, I'll talk a little about, the kind of uh, tools that we can engage in. As we know that there are only three ways in which we can engage our audience. First is text, second is audio, third is video. My uh, very, very uh, strong advice would be keep text to the minimal, make your audio personal because if try to understand that when someone is when you have made sure that you have allowed someone to hear something that person will probably do it while doing some other work so for example i am cutting my vegetables and listening to a podcast right it always happens like that so when we have an audio, which means that our, all our senses are not actively engaged. And that is the reason why podcast is doing so well. Our podcast is being spoken about from so many angles that it allows you to, uh, it, allow, it doesn't uh, force you to give your complete attention. You can give it selective attention. So you are listening and while listening, you are doing something else. So your hands and your uh, mind are differently engaged, right? In the hands and ears. And your mind is divided. So if you are giving a podcast to anybody, or if you are thinking of making a podcast, there are a many, there are many such uh, sites on uh, the internet, which will tell you how to begin your podcast. Sites, there are many. You can use SoundCloud or you can use your own platform, you can build one. And then you can close it to ensure that it is available only to selected uh, viewers. So all those uh, technologically and uh, uh, user interface wise, all those things are already sorted. But if you're trying to make a podcast, always do yourself this favor, read up on internet. There are many such sites who tell you how to start your podcast. So you read up about that. It will tell you everything about the minimal tools that you will require to uh, purchase and if you don't want to do that what are the softwares that you can download right so you make your purchases very very judiciously keeping in mind what you need now always understand that when you have given a podcast either it is music I mean what do we love, love to hear either it is music or it is drama right if there is uh, academic content and you want people to hear it because they would enjoy it. You have to make it personal. Personal doesn't mean people's personal lives. Personal means a person should be able to personally connect with that content. I can tell you one. There is, uh, if you just, uh, if you're interested, you can just uh, Google it out. There is a radio di diary, radio diary of an Iranian woman. It's available on Google. It's not on YouTube. It's a radio diary. So she had been uh, invited to document her day on an audio format. And when you actually hear it, you will find that you, will, uh, you are actually watching her telling her story. You are watching her brother 
she asks her brother that what is your dream for me and the brother says i want to see you married now you can feel that uh, this is a wrong dream but try to understand this is iran this is not india so culturally and otherwise and learning changes by culture or at least the presentation changes by culture even if learning doesn't so when you actually hear that kind of a personal uh, narrative it impacts you far more than an otherwise drag academic content and that is where i say make sure that your content is perceived as deemed as personal for videos try to make it inspiring it is difficult for ourselves to make a video which is inspiring because the kind of tools and technology that will be required may not be handy when i say inspiring if you try to look at the old ads of airtel together we build a nation right those were brilliant ads and i have used them again and again and again in my management classes because uh, i always found them that uh, the way the content was presented was something to hell learn from i remember uh, uh, that aspect of the airtel ad where there was a particular portion that two fingers can build a nation the victory sign by napoleon two fingers can build a nation one finger can ruin hopes that was tendulkar was out and the empire had raised a finger you know the two coming together and when you see it actually you get you can't help but get moved so when you use video use the kind of video that a person after watching it doesn't have an option to not react they have to react and they have to of course if they are in a particular uh, class if they are in a marketing class if they are in, a, in an ob class they have to react from that angle right it's important for us to generate the kind of content or pick the kind of content that make people react third and the the one that i named first text for online consumption text gets a little uh cumbersome if a person has to read for, for uh, i mean read too much because anyway the technical uh, uh exposure has actually made it uh, i mean the technical exposure has actually been too much for us to take so we are constantly looking for distractions and the distraction that you have mentioned here that how to minimize distraction is something that people are probably looking for they are waiting they want that distraction to happen because they are tired so if you are giving text make sure that it is small if you go to my website i mean uh, i can just only give you an example right now if you go to my website uh, website uh, koraldasgupta.com you will find uh, there is something called uh, stories instagram stories are something like that short very short stories right the stories are there in an instagram post now if you give text make sure that you are giving texts of that order which is really short doesn't take too much uh, of a person to invest his eyes and mind but such content does have a conversation so the person who reads that has a follow up in her brain so that that discussion is going on give them small content if you are giving them text don't give them very large content it becomes cumbersome uh finally i think i have already spoken about uh the voice modulation aspects uh as i said that it is not possible for everybody to have a buland awaaz and meetha awaaz so that people love to hear your awaaz but uh, if the awaaz is not uh, being your friend your content can that is in all of us because as professors we are being entertainers and we are being content generators that is all that we have done but i think that is my personal thought that it is important and uh, about time that uh, academia 
tries to look at content from a very different perspective compared to the typical academic formatting. The typical academic formatting is right to write, uh, is perfect to write research papers, but when it gets presented in a class or between people or between a web discussion, it needs entertainment content. And it is about time that we embrace that entertainment has a have a role to play in academia and not stay close to uh, such kind of intervention. The last and the most important thing that I would like to say before I conclude. These are some things that I do, and I thought that I'll put them across to you in case they are of your, in, uh, your uh, need. Uh, before any class, I, don't, I never tell them what I'll discuss or how I'll discuss, but in the subject line, I tell them what they will go back with. So the value proposition is right there in the subject line. So you know that if you attend this class, what is it that you will go back with? Secondly, keep reinforcing that the stuff that we are talking about is futuristic. Have a, have a discussion while we have our past to discuss, learn from, our present to analyze, interpret and decode. End of the day, whatever we are doing, we are doing it for the future. We have to reinforce that constantly again and again to our audience that what they are doing now will help in the future. It, is in, it will be nice if we can show them that picture and very strongly reinforce it into their brain that whatever we, you do now will end of the day impact your future. So you think about your future, decide, this is the, decide that this is the picture of your future that you want to see yourself into and hence come back and design your present and help us design your present. I have often taken uh, challenges and uh, uh, what do you call it? Challenges and uh, targets, targets, yes. Challenges and targets from my few, uh, students. I have always, uh, okay, this is something that I definitely not endorsing, but I have managed to pull this out. One of the uh, batches that were really rowdy, I told them, that um, whether you study or no, it's not my headache. I have my job. I'm getting my payment. If you are putting money, whether you get the value for that money or no, your problem. Whether you come to my class in time or no, your problem. I will never stop anybody. Right now that we are in, uh, in technological uh, environment, if you feel that there are better things in your uh, environment, which is uh, more important than this particular conversation, go ahead. I am getting my money. I will not take extra interest. Tumko problem hai, tumko mere paas hona so that actually worked because when you tell them that their future is when they actually not just tell them when they are convinced that they have missed something, and that they have missed something which can impact their future. And they have that fear in their brain. That is, some, that is a time when they come back. Or when they miss something like they feel that they have missed a part of the entertainment, they come back. When they, feel, when they hear from others that, oh my God, you really missed it. That is when they come back. So I get all those texts, you know, that... Uh, can we do it again? Ma'am, okay, don't take the full one hour lecture, but 15 minutes if we could just discuss. So if you have brought your audience to that level, you have done your job. After that, you give them 15 minutes or you are absolutely fine to give them that one hour, irrespective of whether you get paid or no, doesn't matter. What matters is that the relationship has already been established. And that is why they have come back to you. Third is, we have to go a little slow. We have to understand that it is impossible for us to follow the same speed, it is impossible for our audience to have the same speed. We all are in our learning space. We all have to forgive ourselves for things that we are not being able to do with equal efficiency and expertise. And I think we should forgive each other. We should forgive ourselves, most importantly, for not being able to keep up with the same uh, speed. Fourth, 
as I say that before every lecture, when you are telling people about the values that that particular lecture will get you, we should also put some measurable objectives in place. This is the class between uh, moment zero, minute zero to minute 120. This is what you go back with. These measurable objectives are very important. It will actually tell people what value they will get from that lecture and they will actually start valuing those values more than anything else. Uh, lastly, yes, not lastly, second lastly. Second lastly, if you have WhatsApp groups, usually we all have, if we have WhatsApp groups, constantly feed, that, feed them with small learning snippets. Those have to be really small. But end of the day, those snippets actually say a lot about your personality and make sure that those learning snippets are very entertaining. For example, a Zuzu ad, you know, Vodafone Zuzu ad. Those are things that are very interesting. So you just take up a YouTube link of a Zuzu video and then two sentences, three sentences, just tell your audience what it told you. I saw this in the morning and I just felt that, oh my God, this is two, three sentences. You will be able to capture their audience far better. So an entertainment content and two, three sentences of learning, it helps. It helps in uh, not only in gathering interest on your content, but also gathering interest on yourself, that who you are and what you are doing and what you stand for. The question that you had, boredom of the participant, absence of nonverbal non feedback, lack of uh, spontaneity, these things will get erased when you take these kind of measures. And lastly, this is something that I do just to do a mind game with my audience. And it gets me fabulous results. That is certain class responses, certain WhatsApp responses. When, they are, when some of them are really touching, when some of them are really things that uh, interests you or something that is really nice, you feel good about just push it into social media among everybody. Just say that today in class, I had asked this question and so-and-so person had given this answer. I have never in my life uh, received such a lavish and beautiful answer. And this answer taught me a lot. Actually, you are saying what you, ha you have to say. But by giving that person that recognition, you have won a heart. And once you win one heart, the other hearts will want themselves to be won. <laughs> And then the class participation will increase far better because they also want themselves to be recognized, registered, uh, you know, uh, named. And uh, that really helps immensely in establishing that digital relationship that we started talking about right in the beginning. I hope uh, people are not yawning by now. I'm certain that uh, nothing of that sort is happening, ma'am. Uh, if, uh, are you open for questions now? Yeah, sure. All right. So uh, participants, uh, the chat box is being monitored. Okay, we already have a question, ma'am. Uh, Mokshda Jhala, a participant, wants to know what is the latest and rational trend in the online education system, especially in uh, enhancing engagement and motivation? Or is there some trick that always works to engage, motivate, and help us keep their focus? Yeah, if this question is technical, uh, I'm afraid I'll not be able to give a solution because uh, only an engineer can actually tell you or um, preferably an IT engineer can tell you that how you can leverage your uh, technical uh, uh, availabilities uh, for your uh, institute or self. But uh, when it comes to your personal uh, uh, inputs in uh, putting together, I mean, in drawing the audience engagement, as I say, that for me, what matters most is the content. Now, one thing that I understand, which I was talking about as well, that technology is the biggest boon and technology is the biggest disaster. <clears throat> now, when, uh, for example, you are trying to say something, 
and someone's internet connectivity is not that good and uh, the conversation is not flowing well that is when you cannot do anything but the only thing that you can do is you can record the conversation and make it available for the person for a later date but otherwise i think your question is more about how to generate the kind of engagement my answer from uh, whatever i know and whatever i i little expertise that i have is people engage with you when they love you people engage with you when they are fond of you and people engage with you when they find value in you give them all three or either and they will come to you mokshda ma'am uh, i hope you've got your answer yes ma'am thank you thank you so much welcome uh, okay here's another question and i think uh, maybe a, a question or two after this question that i'm taking um and then we'll have to wind up the session okay so this question is from isha dave and she wants to know or rather she's stating that she has a habit of uh, using gestures and hand movements while taking sessions particularly when she's talking about case studies or maybe she's using the storytelling format now she wants to know whether it is fine to continue this in the online format because she feels that uh, this helps her with voice modulation but her fear is that maybe using hand gestures in online format could cause disruptions so um, specific experiences on your part man that would help her uh, i don't think this is negative in any any way one of the reasons why i don't feel this is negative is that i do that so <laughs> So you have so Isha you have your answer. <laughs> so you can understand that since I do it I cannot say that it is negative of course you are doing the right thing it's absolutely fine. But actually uh, I mean uh, on a serious note when you know when your hands and uh, you know your body movement is a little aggressive it shows your passion. So it is not necessary that people are feeling that you are being too expressive. Actually people get to see your passion and uh as long as you don't break things around you i think it's absolutely fine <laughs> okay uh one last question for ma'am anyone else all right i think that's it so um thank you very much ma'am uh, for all that you have shared with us uh, please call me coral why do you call me ma'am i have habit i guess <laughs> all right thank you so much coral for uh, accepting our invitation and doing this session uh, a lot of tips that you talked about you you began with your personal uh, experiences and what activities or what uh, um, step you have been taken not just in the online format but also in the offline format and i think uh, that's going to be very very helpful to our participants personally to me your statement about overwhelming them shocking them and surprising them that i think is a key take away because uh, a lot of us tend to uh, get into that rut okay this is the topic that has to be covered and what what variation can we do in this so uh, again it comes that technology is there to help us but eventually it's all about how we design our sessions and how we deliver those sessions i think that is the key to uh, keeping the class engaged so thank you very much ma'am for sharing that with us on behalf of gls university's faculty of business administration formerly known as nrpb we look forward to more such interactions in the future thank you Thank you, Thank very, you very so much, Dipali. It was nice to know you as well. Same here, ma'am. Thanks to your entire team. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Participants, Adnan, maybe to the session is going to be on classroom environment yeah, for uh, effective retention. the meeting is going to remain open you may log off and log back in at around 12:20 thank you i was beaten badly in a wife's video in a
Participants, just please check your mics. There seem to be ambient noises coming from somewhere.